and we are live. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Beyond the 90. Thank Again, this one's a bit late. I wonder, I, I was on the Don Robbie show from the you, don't, you didn't see. Um, thank you all for your lovely comments and everything. It's been great. I don't want to make this all about myself, but thank you for joining in. We've got Ant, we've got Alex. This is going to be a fun one, isn't it? Trying to d d dissect this one. First of all, Ant, how are you doing? Congratulations on your Benjamin Bloom interview. Um, can I get your autograph? Uh, who was the one on the Don Robbie show? It wasn't me. <laughs> but no, it's, that interview's done surprisingly well. But I actually think, because I've done another one on Upside Sport, again, for the um, Chelsea game. And I actually think that one was better than the one that went by, that went like semi-viral. But so I'm going to I'm gonna put this in the comment section. So if you're watching this back as a, a video, make sure to check out my video on Upside Sport. It's a cheeky little plug there. Nice plug there, Alex. Um, anything your side? How are you feeling? Do you do you need all over the place? Hey, oh, uh, you know, yeah, it's just fun. You know, I'm not even gonna. We won't even get into the yesterday's game, but you know, waking up at seven thirty a.m. my time to get up for a game like that, pretty frustrating. You know, I even feel worse for Hannah who has to wake up on, you know, the West Coast at an earlier time than me because, I don't know about you, that was hard to watch. <laughs> it was hard to watch, especially when you're live streaming the game and yeah. I've got the an audience of I don't know how many people watching and I went, right, um, so, right. I almost feel like, not brushing under the club, oh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> first goal, set piece, first header, Arsenal, what are we saying, guys? Because I, I, I'm fed up. I'm how legit many, fed up of set pieces now. How many times we this? We've said everything, but it's we, still the same issue. Do you, you know, want to know my thoughts on the set scoring from set pieces? Watch the Arsenal post match. Watch the Burnley post match. Watch any post match from this season. Same thing. Just Brentford. Uh, Brentford as well. How many times is this going to happen, and then it still be brushed under a carpet? It's as if it's not an issue. Rudiger, who's absolute unit in the air just but uh, i think he um, how he can be on he wasn't unchallenged but how he can have a run on the defect on ndd in the box is ridiculous we need to scrap this zonal marking and like, i know for certain teams I was, I was talking about this with someone on twitter i'm not the biggest fan of zonal marking but for certain teams it works for us it clearly doesn't work and how many more times are we going to have to concede for this point to be proven. So it's not even as if it's like a one-off or like it's happened two or three games. It has been a problem since Brendan Rodgers has come in. And this is the thing, just kind of come on as well. Um, shout out to Doug as well. Um, he's in the chat. If Rodgers in or is out, okay, we'll get onto that probably in a bit, but we won't have you two more. Again, this third season, it's just... just... Yeah, it kind of feels the same way. But again, if you want to check out a video with Doug, again, shout out to Doug. Doug, make sure you subscribe to his channel. But there's a link on our channel about that as well, um, about his third season and what it was like at Liverpool. Um, Alex, over to you. Anything extra to add? Because I'm sick of talking about set pieces, but I feel like we have to mention it again because same thing. It's just the same thing over and over again. Same crap, different day. Yeah. I'm trying to limit what I'm saying. Same malarkey. Different I'm going to... Okay. Same malarkey, different day. Let's, we're going to get a malarkey <laughs> count going today because, geez, um, you know, Ant said it perfectly. Zonal marking with us is 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 garbage. It doesn't work. Um, and I feel like we've been saying it time and time and time again, saying, you know, oh, we gave up another set piece goal. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. And what had happened yesterday, it wasn't even a shock at this point. It was, it was bound to happen sooner or later. And you know, you'd think that if first, everybody, first everybody header man. I know, but like if, <sighs> if if you would think that everybody on the bloody planet is noticing <laughs> this, you'd think the staff would be like, something's not working. Mm. You know, I live in Canada. I live across a freaking ocean. And I'm like, guys, this ain't working. They're literally on the pitch and they're like, mm, you know, let's try it again. Because like I just don't understand what's going on and what is going on in the sense of like, you got to give your head a shake and be like, this ain't working. We need to change our entire game plan on how to defend against these. Because 
it's it's not working. Twenty, I think it's been twenty goals since the start of last season, and that's mm. that's embarrassing. Like that's unacceptable and uncalled for. Like let's let's get let's get real. This needs to get sorted out ASAP. The thing is, as well, is I've I've loved what Rogers has done, but it's just pure stubbornness at this point of like sticking with with it. And it's like I know he's come out and saying that there's like that it's work, but he doesn't see a problem. It's like if he doesn't work. If he doesn't see a problem in that, then I think there's even more coaching issues than I originally thought. Yeah, no, I agree. Shout out to Brad as well from Lesser Till I Die. Make sure you check out him on Lesser Till I Die. Fantastic bloke. We'll get to some of your comments in a second. They're coming in thick and fast. Oh, I'm just glad we got that. Well, glad that I got, what, got that one done. But it's partly down to, again, it was a good, it was a, it was a very, very good performance from uh, from Chelsea, but we just didn't make we made everything easy. I mean, I think somebody put in the comments well the the, the tactics from way of praised Brendan Rodgers when he got the tactic right. He got everything wrong today, in my opinion. Three at the back was probably the only thing that he really got right. But in terms of that, Mark or Brighton on the right, and he knows Chilwell. He knows Chilwell, and Chilwell gave him the run around and complete run around. The thing is. I think three at the back was the right thing, but why were we playing four three? Uh, sorry, four three four three. This formation that we've never played before. Why are you testing that against Chelsea, top of the league, European champions? It's like if you're going to play the three at the back, and let's be honest, it wasn't a three at the back. It was a five at the back because our fullbacks yeah. uh, couldn't get forward at all, and they were so deep. So it was a five at the back, not a three at the back. But then we played with um, we played with the a complete different sort of system beyond that than we played with before. So it's like it seems such a strange game to try and change the the for like a try a system that we haven't used before, which like, I, I couldn't make sense of that. And then Albright and I actually thought Albrighton was one of the was the best of a bad bunch yesterday because he get they at least kicked your World Cup at times. So like, it was too late though. I was yeah. saying on the stream he should have done it earlier. Just yeah. like other players do it to Perez, K take him, knock his confidence. The fans were again. Well, we, I didn't hear it was on TV on mute, but I imagine the fans were on his back. But yeah. didn't happen. No, and the thing, the thing is, like all Brighton as a right wing back, um, like how deep he was playing yesterday, it removes the best thing from from his game, which is, well, obviously he's got that that work rate, which like you could put him, you could put him in goal and you'll still see his work rate. But in terms of his actual footballing ability, is his delivery into the box. When you're sitting that deep, you're not going to see any of that. Um, defensively, he works hard, but he's not a natural defender and mm. not a natural right back. And that that gets it show, that got shown to an extent. The fact that they were getting a lot of success down that side. And I don't blame Will Brighton for that at all because he was working hard and it's just not his position as a right wing back. And I know Ricardo Pereira is injured and stuff, but it it just felt like, I don't think we had any other options really, but it just felt like it wasn't the game for Will Brighton to come back in after an injury in the first place. And then to play him on the out of position, it just... If it felt like you were throwing him straight into a fire. What do you think, Alex? I'm 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 just spent. <laughs> but you're right. You and I don't agree, disagree with anything you said, really. Like I think one of the biggest things that I have had a very hard time looking at over, especially over the last 24 hours or so since you know the end of the match yesterday was we often praise Roger so much for his tactical genius you know, his formations and everything that he does. And, you know, Neil, you said it perfectly. He got everything wrong yesterday. Like absolutely everything wrong to a point where we were absolutely humiliated by Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And I, it's come to the point where, you know, you really start questioning as to why Rogers is doing what he's doing. And that's not me trying to, you know, hypothetically think, oh, maybe it's this or that. But it just seems like either he has lost the confidence in the dressing room or he's just doing whatever in order to get something to spark. Um, and I'm not saying that that was his idea yesterday, but 
you know, he got everything wrong and the result is expected when that happens. So I really don't know what else I can actually say about it because, you know, I think everyone would agree was that, you know, formations were wrong, you know, starting 11 was wrong. It just, it looked, it looked messy. It looked disjointed. Yeah, it, looked it, it looked horrible. <laughs> Yeah. It was really stupid. I mean, the, the formation could... Well, the thing is, the formation could work. However, you come, you're expecting Samore and Ndidi to come up against two of the best players in Europe. One of the... I said this on the stream. World Cup winner and Euros winner. Them two... And them two, in general, are two of the best players and they're both at Chelsea. It would be stupid to think that we can come up against them and win... Um, obviously, in hindsight, that's the case. But in Diddy's great, but Samori just wasn't at the levels. But nobody was really, and no. And something we said there about and uh, sorry, Kante and Jorginho. Jorginho, probably the best passer of a ball in the Premier League, or at least no pressure. top two or three. He had all the time in the world to almost play a quarterback role, just like firing balls to, to whoever was available in the Chelsea. Uh, in the Chelsea team. So I don't know how you can be so passive. But the thing is, I said this yesterday, I don't mind losing to these top teams. It's how you lose to them. It's like, if you're going to lose to them, have a go, go down swinging. And like that second goal, I think that just summed up us up completely yesterday, just dropping off, dropping off. No no one committed at any point to Kante. And it's like, at some point, you, the defenders have got to engage with him. Otherwise, he... He probably could have carried on for another two, three metres before any defender was going to get anywhere near That's him. That's the midfield's job, though. That if the Johnny Evans is waiting because he was caught in no man's land, he can't because if Kante plays a ball through to um, to either of the wing backs who were far up the pitch, we're going wisely stepped out of play, just like we've criticised Evans before. So I don't blame him too much. He should be some more. He's just come in and just try. I've just got to take this guy out. Um, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do, but at the same time, but once you find yourself in that position, like at the point, Samore should have just like taken his legs out from underneath him and taken a foul on the halfway line. But once he's got as far far as he did, someone's got to engage with him and, and push out because the fact that he picked the ball up where he did and ran and ran and absolutely no pressure on him, it's just is it's not what you it's the thing is, it's, I was going to say it's not what you come to expect to see from us, but this season it is it is really what like you expect to see from us, which is the the most like saddening part because we've said time after time, oh next like we'll bounce back from this when we've got X, Y, and Z back, we'll bounce back from it. But we're getting X, Y, and Z back. We've got Johnny Evans back now. We're not really looking any defensively defensively any better. Tielemans admittedly wasn't there, but. Everyone's saying about James Justin and Wesley Fofana coming back. I don't see them making a huge difference. And particularly, like despite the fact I think they're both brilliant players, like to drop, to be dropped back into a team that's low on confidence and performing as we are, they're going to have to perform 10 out of 10 instantly to make an impact, which like just doesn't happen. Even if they do, we still lose that game, Alex. Even if say all say Telemans comes back and back in, potentially we get we get something from the game. But Justin and Fafana come back in, I think we still lose that game. It, 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 there's no point in hanging your hat on it because yeah. it wasn't just the players. I think it, there was a lot. Of, like another example, we're playing three four three, sure. But if you're playing, why are you playing two inverted wingers? When they're not inverted wingers, they're out and out wingers. If you're going to play the insert too, we've got two. We've got Perez. I don't know if he was available. I didn't really look. I was too depressed. And Madison as well. <laughs> On the inside channels, they can feed him the ball quite easily. So that's where you'd play these two players, especially with Perez dropping into midfield to help out a lot more. Surely if you go for the 3 4 3, you pick them two as your like number 10, inverted number 10s. Yeah. To start off with your first question that you asked, uh, I don't think they would win. I I honestly think the score could be worse because you have James Justin who hasn't played in almost a calendar year. He's not going to come back to James Justin that he was playing at that level. You know, you need to look at the type of injury he had. He's going to be coming back and he's going to be, and this is with full on respect to, to Justin, he's going to come on as probably a sub because he's going to have to build that 
you know, his everything back up to where he was. And then you look at Fofana, it's, it's the same thing. You know, they're not going to just throw him in. He had a, he had a, a, a horrible injury. You're not going to just be like, you know what, you're good to go. Let's, let's throw you back in. So there's two players right there that in my eyes wouldn't do much in this type of a game. And then Yuri, who's been, you know, picked up a, an injury, you know, he's been, he's been sidelined. So him coming in, I don't think he'd make much, much of a difference either. So, you know, when that, I think honestly, the game could have been even a worse scoreline, you know, if you had those guys in, you know, who were just getting healthy. Um, but when you say, um, you know, when you talk about, um, when you talk about, you know, the, the inverted wingers, when you look at, you know, having Lookman and Barnes, they looked invisible. Like absolutely invisible, you know. Like I have to give credit to Lookman. Like Lookman actually looked like he was trying extremely hard, and that's one thing that I absolutely admire about the kid is that you know, no, whenever he's in the starting eleven or on the field, he is going to give a hundred percent. Barnes just kind of looked absent. I didn't really notice him at all, to be honest. Um, but like you said, even if you had the option to put Perez and, and Madison in at the start, you know, do you do it? Because, you know, kind of like what Ant said, you know, every week it's like the same thing. It's This isn't just a one-off issue where you go, well, you know, this has been a one stinker. It's been every week. And, you know, I make the joke, but it's like, when's the next international break? Maybe would they need another break? Because their their level of effort has been has been catastrophic. Like, God I don't bless. know what to say. Oh, that's the thing. I, the thing is, we... Oh, Fans will put up with a lot, but it's when you start to see the commitment not there. That's where, like, from talking to fans outside the ground yesterday, that's a, and I agree with this. That's where a lot of fans start to sort start to lose their temper and lose lose their rag with it. And um, it was just it, that's my frustration. It just felt felt so like so much going through the motions and not not really believing that you. You're going to win the game, and I felt yesterday before we a ball would even been kicked, we didn't look like we were gonna we were gonna do anything in that game. But something I, would, I did find something that I'm gonna just change to- topic slightly. Something that was mentioned to me yesterday was the fact of us playing out from the back. We are the most predictable team playing out from the back. And then when I was watching the Liverpool Arsenal game after it, and when you watch both of those teams who are light years ahead of us playing out from the back, they don't. If the pass isn't on to play out from the back, they will go long. They won't force it every single time when they're getting pressed relentlessly to play it out from the back. We were playing right into Chelsea's hands, who were set up to press us. We're, we're not great at playing out from the back, and Chelsea are probably one of the best teams at pressing. What like we're ju- we're just playing straight into their hands. We really are, Alex. Any. No, Ant says it. Ant said it perfectly. We, as soon as we get possession, the other team knows exactly what we're going to do. They read us like a book, and it's not just one team. It's it's every single team that we've played this year. Our we we I've never seen a squad lose possession so many times than Leicester has this season. It it just seems like, and it's just been. Growing and growing and growing, you know, like yesterday, uh, there'd be times where, oh, we got possessed, uh, we lost it. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, like, why did we even bother? Like, might as well just kick the ball to them because that's exactly well, what just who filled out. the pitch. Yeah. The thing, like, the thing is, as well, it's not as if we're losing possession, trying things going forward and like taking risks that like could, could lead to stuff. It's like we lose possessions in like the most stupid positions like playing such high risk football out from the back with such low rewards with the way that we then transition the ball from the midfield to the attack, which is the whole point of playing out from the back is to open up the space. But even once we do beat the first first layer of the press, how many times do we do that? And then the ball still ends up back at Schmeichel's feet. So it's it's at the point, I don't mind us playing out from the back. I really don't, but it's like, we are so predictable and um, just, as you, as you said, Alex, we are the most most easy team to read. Everyone knows exactly what we're going to do before we do it. Yeah, no, you guys are right. And it's just same thing. Again, it's just the same things all over again. And this is completely, it's like the team that we're used to seeing, pressing from the front, attacking, going again. Vardy, 
didn't even get touched the ball because there was so there was nobody even. He had Samorian and Diddy sitting in the double pivot so deep that there was just loads and loads of space ahead of them. And again, giving Jorginho all the time in the world, but it, it's just the tactics were just not non-existent. And the pressing, the things that we've learned from Brendan Rodgers, the physical fitness, the present, the uh, the the fitness, the ability to keep going, and like pace of the last minute, we haven't got anything to do with anything. At the moment, Alex. Uh, oh, sorry, and I'll, I'll pass over to you quickly. Yes. Or if Alex, you ready? Um, because, um, yeah, yeah, cool. No worries. Uh, yeah, do you want me to drop you out, Alex? Oh, but yeah, anyway. Um, um, okay, cool. Thing is, we were sat so deep yesterday, and the thing is, I don't mind sitting deep counter attacking against these sides because we've got the players to counter attack teams and hurt them. Mm-hmm. But ev- we were sat so deep with no link up to that that front three. They were so like. Lookman, he carried the ball well at times, but he got can, past a couple of players as well. Players, but Barnes and Vardy, for as much as I I love what both of those players, they were both absent from that game. And this is what you're saying about the inverted wingers. You need someone who's going to be able to create for Vardy, which we didn't have. And because we were sat so deep back, um, Castagne wasn't able to get forward and support. Mm-hmm. Which is sort of the job of the wing back. Neither was all Brighton, so we we were just pumping the ball long, hoping for just hoping that Vardy or Barnes or Lookman might get on the end of something. So we just looked completely out of ideas, and they they just they suffocated us in, and we didn't have any pl- any plan of how we're going to get out. No, none at all. Alex, just yeah, I don't know if you heard, me, but what are your thoughts? Because yeah. Well, you know it's bad when, and don't quote me, I don't know if I'm fully correct, I think Vardy had six touches and half of them were from kickoffs. That, th- right there. <laughs> that screams. You know that cry. <laughs> that screams panic. And I think the other thing that I'm going to say about formations is why the heck are you start doing it using a formation when you have so many players out of position? Hmm. You know, yeah. like... But that's like in hockey. Imagine putting like a like a goaltender and having him as a center. Like it's like, you know, imagine like Schmeichel playing as a striker. Like that's just, like it just it's chaotic. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. You're having all these players play in form in positions that they're not fairly confident in. You know, mm-hmm. you'd expect something to work, but like I don't know. Like <sighs> it's hard to talk about it. It's so hard because it really it's, is. It's just there's so many points that kind of merge into each other and. That's the thing. But the players do need to take responsibility, And Even if yeah. the manager gets it wrong or stuff and the formation's not good, win your second balls, go and yeah. put an effort in, go and put a tackle in for us, for the fans, yeah. get the fans back on side. Because they, I under, look, I've never left a match early, but I, as I said on the stream, I they're leaving at 80 minutes. I understand, but I wouldn't, but mm. I understand. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like even if the tactics you don't agree with them and you think they're completely wrong, still just like get stuck into someone, give the fans something to get to get behind. But it's the thing is, this Chelsea, like we used to be that team that would rise for the big occasion and the big teams coming mm-hmm. to attack, like coming to Leicester, but we just seem to roll over for them that one. <laughs> but it's not just for big teams, is it? Either like we rolled over for for almost anyone but so one thing I was did want to mention is you said about the team that started and I put this out on Twitter before the game so it's not as if it like being genius in hindsight which anyone can be but but without Tielemans playing Madison as poor as his form has been needed to play that game so we had some progression from a midfield and uh, so that when we did get the ball we could transition from defence to attack but without uh, T, without because without Tielemans, we had no one who was really going to get his get their foot on the ball, play it forward, and and start the attacks. Which it shows how reliant we are on one player. Which I'm going to be honest, even if Tielemans plays, it makes makes no difference because we've seen with Arsenal, Tielemans played same same thing. Leeds, uh, Tielemans played same thing really. Um, but we just didn't have like without. Either Tielemans or Madison, we didn't have a player who was gonna, who was going to play that ball forward and really try and initiate any attacks. 
Yeah, no, you're right. And even then, in terms of if they were going to play, you're coming up against a strong defence, but then someone against a strong midfield that bossed it perfectly, you need to be closing them down, hounding them down, make sure they don't have any time on the ball, putting in tackles. And there was just, again, I don't think that's too much to ask, Alex. No, you just want a little bit of effort. We didn't get any for yesterday. You know, and we'll probably get into this later, but with, you know, Roger's comments after the match, you know, that was one thing that blew my mind. But, you know, you'd expect some, you'd expect the players to, you know, you know, their, their give a malarkey meter was, was at an all time zero. Like, because I can't actually say the other word because, you know, I have to act a little bit professional, but. I've got malarkey meter. I was going to bring it up. You read my mind. <laughs> I was going to get your what's, what's this to, to Alex and also the comments? What's this on the scale of your malarkey meter? And if you don't know what malarkey is, Google it. I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> um, uh, honestly, when I look at it, it's they zero. Didn't care. There was no drive. There was no desire. There was no motivation. There's nothing, you know, the players stepped onto the pitch and they were like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of dance around for 90 minutes. And then after that, we'll just kind of get upset and be like, well, on to the next one. Didn't care. Yeah. And you can see it. You can see it in the dressing room. You can see it through the comments of the players, you know, through the international break. It's like, it's like they're expecting that they're not going to pull their heads out of the sand here. They're just going to say, stay there and cower. And, you know, you look at the standings, you look at the table and I don't know about you, but I'm looking at this going, you know, look at the next couple of matches. They're not turning this around anytime soon. Even if they do, even if they get one win in the next couple of weeks, you know, I'm going to be like, you know, I want a string of wins. I want them to show me that they're actually giving it, you know, giving a malarkey. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm not confident for Thursday. You know, there's there's no confidence. You know, when the players don't have any confidence or no drive, you know, the fans have no confidence. And mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to say, and I definitely believe that, you know, Leicester City supporters, there's zero confidence. Yeah, there was no, there was no really need to have confidence uh, which is so weird because again ollie's been sacked because at least i had that over the man united fan who was hosting saeed is there much love to saeed and that but every time he's like i'm not having rogers and like you ain't got a choice you're terrible your manager's terrible and then and that that's i don't even have that anymore it's Karaki of a wheel now isn't it not ollie karaki <laughs> taken over is it Karaki? is it not carrick yeah michael carrick Karaki. Karaki, right? I thought. Oh, it was yeah. <laughs> you have you, you need to get on Twitter more to see the memes. Yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> you know me and Twitter is like, yeah, it it it's not look, it's really not looking good at the moment. I mean, how's other? I just just I've made, I mean the highlight of this is actually the fact that we've got malarkey meter. Both of us, I can't believe Alex that that we managed to collect the malarkey meter. That's beautiful timing you read my mind you read my mind big time um but yeah it could have been more that's the thing they changed formation and the thing is that's a sign of a quality team let's be honest with chelsea they were like we're not happy with three let's go for more let's see if we can go and get more and that's what we kind of used to, we well kind of what we used to do we used to go right let's see if we can get some more out of this game let's drive them into the floor and make them pay and the best person, the man of the match, was um, VAR and offside, to be honest. That linesman definitely had a tenner on Chelsea 3-0. The <laughs> amount of goals he was ruling out. But it's like you say, that could have easily been, that could have been more four, six. five, six. I'm just, the only the only silver lining of yesterday is Chilwell didn't score. But that is literally the only positive. Hmm. There isn't really a lot. And the thing is, we know how much of a confidence player he is. It's 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 not it's not good. And just uh, just want to sh yeah, I something that made me laugh again. Of course, well, a couple of things. Um, the Ghanaian excellence with the with the cracking shot that I was like, I did expect that one. Um, that was that was amazing. Uh, so Ethan, so sorry, um, Chester, thank you for reminding me. Ghanaian excellence with that shot. 
Um, and then shout out to Glenn, Glenn the Fox on Twitter as well. Lovely man. Um, but um, <laughs> giving John, John Ledwidge, man of the match, the groundskeeper. <laughs> and I just thought that was summed it up, really. It's um, it's it's not looking good, man. And yeah, I've I've really got nothing else to say, but I can't again. Normally I'm quite positive and oh, you can see it getting better. And now the game's just coming thicker fast. They're not actually they're not actually that great. You know what we're doing this. Thank you, David. <laughs> that, that's that just that me every help. time you every time you feel down, just gonna watch that back. It's like I'm not gonna watch any games this season, just Saturday, three o'clock, sticking that on. I'll, I'll try week. and put in the com okay, I'll try and find that. Put in the comments the goal and put in the final celebrations, them two things. <laughs> can cure I won't say I won't say cure mental illnesses because that's a bit <laughs> but that, that can definitely help <laughs> oh, ah, that's going to get me cancelled there we go it's been but, nice knowing you guys anyway um, but that's something positive to look forward to it's Watford next week because they've just turned over United and starting to pick up form it's, oh, my dilly ding dilly dong is it is it bad hey, that I'm... Hey, 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 hey. Uh, they'll go past us if they beat us next week. They'll go above us. Is it bad that I'm pretty sure in the next four games, two of our opponent, like two of the, pl- the teams that we're facing, are Watford and Newcastle? And I'm not optimistic at all for either of those matches, even though Newcastle hasn't even won a game this season. Like that's how bad it is. The when thing you is, at- they haven't won a game this season yet. Wait till they play us. I know, right? <laughs> You know, because they beat us last season when we re- when we needed to win, but <laughs> so they need to win again. Like Ben Teke syndrome, isn't it? Uh, like, ben Teke never scores, and he scores months. against us all the time. <laughs> well, that was when ben, he hadn't scored in eight months, and didn't he score a hat trick? Well, he scored, yeah, something stupid yeah. or two. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> There's not <laughs> anything to be positive with, and that's the thing. I'd love to see it. it has gone, yeah. That's it. If you don't but, laugh, you're gonna cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've cried already. <laughs> All the way <laughs> back from London. <laughs> Are you okay, sir? No, don't don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got nothing else, but at least we've got the malarkey meter sorted. Yeah. Um, that's gonna be. We need to make that a meme because that'll be yeah. fucked up. Be good fun. But if you, if you anything else before we finish, and or Alex. Um, uh, I think honestly, I think these next few weeks mm-hmm. are going to be very telling as to what will happen moving forward. Um, you know, I'm not one to speculate, but you know, with Man United, you know, you know, sacking, you know, Ole, you know, you, you gotta wonder what's going to happen with that, but also just with the atmosphere and you know the the attitudes within the dressing room here at Leicester, you know, I. I'm not. I'm not on the Rogers out boat. No, I'm not. But something needs to happen. Yeah. It, something does because yeah. it's going to get worse, and it's going to get worse, and it's going to get worse. And yeah. you know, I, I still believe that you know Rogers is talented and he can figure something out, but he needs to accept the fact that his stubbornness is not going to do that. And I think that's not going to happen. It, it's just not, unfortunately. I just, I just don't know where we go from here because you know we have a pivotal game on Thursday, and I'm not confident for that. We have a match on the weekend. Not confident about that. You know, it's just, it's to the point where it's hard to watch games and get excited for games, and that has. And that's even that's shocking, and I think, you know, they need to just kind of bring some energy back, not only into the club but into the into the fan base, because deflated. we time. are very deflated, and it's just yeah. it's just bad. It was not good. It was not good. I think again, one thing we can kind of such again, do I want to do this? I mean, we might as well cover it now. Brendan Rogers saying that we've been overachieving. That, that seems like a get out of jail statement because he said a couple of weeks ago about wanting to compete with the top six. 
and like and achieve and being an ambitious club and trying to and all of that came a couple of weeks ago when it looked like we turned a corner. Now we're in a little bit of a rut again. He's saying, but we've overachieved. It's like you can't say when it's going well, but you, but this is our level and you want to be competing at this level. And then when it starts going badly, saying, oh well, we've been overachieving anyway. It's like either choose one or the other. Because I don't know if you remember, Puel, no, not many people have made it much of it because of Brendan Rogers saying it. When Puel got said that, he got absolutely slated for it. So it's yeah. like they both so should I, be equally, yeah. 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 If not like, more, Brendan Rogers for what he's achieved with the club. Not just more Brendan Rogers, but also the squad he's got compared to what Puel's got. Mm-hmm. Like this squad is maybe we shouldn't be finishing top. Well, we should. Probably shouldn't be finishing top four each year, top six, but at least top eight with the squad we've got, at least competing for that sort of top within the top eight. And it's it's just almost seems like a get out of jail and um, like almost a sympathy. It seemed like he wanted sympathy. And it's like you can't, as I say, you can't say when it's going well that, oh, we've got the ambition to compete against the very best. And then when it's not, oh, we don't have. We don't have the like we've been overachieving. It's either one or the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's just it's just comments like that that will make the fans turn against the manager even more. And that's the thing, Alex. We don't want to turn against the manager, but comments like that really don't help. No, and I, I'm going to be absolutely honest. Um, I was frustrated before those comments, and then I was extremely frustrated after those comments because those types of comments are cop outs. You know, yeah. and you said it perfectly, you know, you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't just sit on the fence. You got to chitter off the pot eventually. So, mm-hmm. um, and that's the the frustrating thing. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm very frustrated with Rogers. I'm not to the point where I want him gone, but I, I'm fully confident that those comments yesterday definitely swayed a lot more people to the Rogers outside and a lot more people that are on that fence now that are being like, I still believe in him, but I don't believe him believe in him as much as I did last time or last yeah. week. And I think that's the biggest thing is that my biggest concern is that Rogers is I don't want to say it, but it seems like Rogers is starting to lose the dressing room. And I, he loses- I agree with that. He's lo- he seems to be losing some of the players. Yeah. But I'm not convinced he's fully committed anymore. Like, no. I'm really not because you hear stories week in, week out of he's been talking to X, Y, and Z. And the thing is, ninety percent of it is absolute rubbish. Yeah. But it's like when there's that that much smoke, there's fire somewhere. And it's like I, I've fun. said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't think he'll be here next year. I really don't. And it can't be good for the dressing room, even if that, even if these aren't these rumors aren't true. To be reading in the newspaper, your manager's your manager's looking for a foot out the door. I'll tell you now, if my where I was work, if I'm where I'm working, if I know my manager's not really that bothered and committed, I'm not I mean, going to be going in 110 percent for him. But it's not even Rogers. It's not just Rogers. Sorry, you know, there's been speculation that more players want out of the club. That's one thing, you know. And then you have comments over the international break from you know Fofana. You have you know. Other comments from Schmeichel, which I still believe were taken out of context. But then you have... He just said he wanted to play in Champions League football. That's all he said. Yeah, but, you know, some people took that out of context. But then you Mm -hmm. also have Tielemans, whose contract negotiations have been, you know, ongoing. And everybody knows that that he's not going to resign. You know, Mm -hmm. so you have all these other, you know, things going on inside that dressing room. when you have all those happening and then you have Rogers who, you know, has been in, you know, the headlines for months now about a possible, you know, new job at a new, uh, at a new club, you know, that just starts to really develop a more toxic environment within that dressing room. And, you know, I think last season, you know, these players loved coming in and playing. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's a healthy dressing room right now. And, you know, not only that is, you know, it doesn't look like, you know, you can say as much as you want about toxic. Yeah. And yeah, I think the other, toxic. you know, what's, what's being, what's, what's happening on the field during the matches is, 
is it is it, is just the you know the the product of what's going on off the pitch you know on game day and you can it's seeping through every single piece of this club right now and it's bad yeah. it's really bad <laughs> it's a shame cause we were so like this season I was so optimistic heading into it I thought Samare Daka brilliant signings. Bertrand at the time I thought wasn't the worst signing in the world and it just seems, well I was so excited for another European campaign I just feel, I feel we haven't even got to December and I already feel flat, which just Mm. it's not not great and the thing is I almost feel like we're going to go through and we're going to lose a few players in the summer and have to go through a rebuilding phase and if we're going to, if that does happen, we need a manager who's fully committed to to that not someone who's looking to get out the door, which that's the thing is Rogers is coming out saying all the right things in the press conference, but he's hardly going to be in the press conference saying, well, I'm just waiting for them to kick Solskjaer out, Solskjaer out before I, before I go. But he could have been a lot more, I guess the players say that, like, oh, I'm, I'm, my focus is here. Like Riyad Morris said it before he moved, right? He said something similar, like he said, oh, my focus is here whilst he was sat on the airport on deadline day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And um, yeah, there's such sorts of things you're just like, I don't know, man. I don't know where we go. I don't know what's happening. Um, the next no month, plan. Is and every all the other manager that's had a bad run has sorted it out, and they've got rid of him. Steve yeah. Bruce has gone. Daniel Fark has gone. Um, uh, De- De- Dean Henderson. Um, Dean Smith has gone. Um, do you know what I mean? These other managers. Um, Steven Gerrard has come in. You know. Watford have managed to sack their manager, get Claudio Ranieri in, and every uh, well, um, sorry, what's his name? Nuno's gone. Yeah. Conte's joined in. There's just there's just all sorts of stuff, and I'm just like, again, I'm going to stick. Up. We all are here to stick behind the team, but at the same time, we just need to criticize them where they're due, and if they are due a lot of criticism at the moment, both the t- players, the team, just everything, management just it's not good enough it really isn't and trust me watching that and then the fact that we didn't have a shot on target until like the until madison shot in like the 67 in and i smallly i I celebrated on streams like like, yes we've done something because that's all i literally had to go in in the stream was that one last thing oh i was gonna say this comment by ethan is i think the perfect way to for this entire issue going on is that I think December will be the month that will either, that will either dictate that we are going to finish at a relatively respectable place on the table, or if we're going downhill. And I I don't know about you, but I feel we're at at a, we're at a crossroads. And I feel like I said this, I feel like we, I feel like I said this like a couple weeks ago, but I feel like we really are at a crossroads where this will define that we finish, you know, at a respectable place in the table, you know, between, you know, seven and 10th, or Mm. this is just a horrible, horrible, horrible season. And we scrape by. And when you look at the table, we're six points off a relegation spot. Like it's not far. It's right behind us. You can see it in that mirror and it's coming up. And I think, you know, we need to be ready for that, you know, for that conversation. You know, our run of form has been horrible. And Newcastle have got a new manager. Norwich have got a new manager. Burnley have scored three. Um, Legion, well, Legion, Watford have just won. Um, Aston Villa have just won. Brentford are on. They're not a good form at the moment. Lost, 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 draw. So it's not, it's not looking up slightly better, looking down, not that much better. It, it's, 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 re- it's, it's bleak. Yeah. And I, yeah. But I think that's the biggest thing that we need to, we need to really, you know, prepare ourselves for. And I think a lot of, a lot of fans are kind of blinded by that. But I think we need to, you know, take that into consideration that, yeah, we, December, we could have a fantastic month in December and this entire season could be turned around. But if we don't figure this out, you know, you need to prepare yourself for, well, we're sitting in 17th and it's been bad and it's not getting any better. And we need to have this conversation. And I think that's the hardest thing to even accept. 
I think what what summed it up perfectly yesterday's game is you know how when we're winning we do violets taking piss and stuff. In fact, Leicester fans were doing that when Chelsea had the ball in the 85th minute. No way. Yeah, that's where I was standing. They were doing the violets with the Chelsea fans. That that just sums it up really. So yeah, depressing. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get through it, guys. We'll get through it. But however it is, I'm not sure because it's 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 not fun. If you enjoy the video, like, subscribe. Make sure you check out Ant Channel. We're live in there in a few minutes as well. Make sure you follow Alex on his lovely new Twitter as well. I need to update that in the description. Actually, I've just realised. Um, and I'll make sure to include. Before you've done it, don't share recordings of highlights <laughs> because you will be banned. <laughs> just just to let everybody know but yes we'll see everybody in the next video so goodbye <laughs>